The documentary, The Other Side of the Ring, showcases four women within a then male-dominated world of professional wrestling. The doc features Delilah Doom, Keita Meggett, Shelly Martinez, and of course, Katarina Lee Waters. Thank you so much, Katarina. Wrestling fans will know you from WWE, Impact Wrestling. Wow, you traveled the world. What's going on right now with you? Tell us a little bit about the documentary. Hi, James. Thanks for having me. Um, well, the documentary is, as you said, features uh, four women. And I know the other women in the documentary as well. Um, and I guess it's a little bit more of a personal take, our personal stories of how we got into wrestling, what it was like for us, and what different paths we sort of took within it, which um, even though I know the others, watching it is really interesting for me still to, to find out so much about them, you know, because it is very personal stories within the wrestling business. Well, it's interesting because obviously it covers the ups and the downs and right. just what it takes to get into the business. And each person, each wrestler, professional wrestler, has their own unique story. Mm -hmm. For you, I learned about the acting background and, and just about you wanted to be in theater and trained actress and do things along those lines. And you have done acting, but this was a totally different type of acting when you get into professional wrestling. Right. I mean, wrestling for me was something, you know, I didn't really get into watching it on a regular basis until I was a teenager, but it was just something that was so fascinating to me. I love watching it. I was I'm a huge fan. I didn't know that it was something that realistically you could pursue. So I never, you know, I never thought about it at that time. Um, other than, you know, oh, it would be cool to one day, you know, somehow be a part of that show. But I didn't think of it as a, as a career path. Um, it was, more of a coincidence later when I was in London and I was pursuing acting and film. Um, I just happened to see a British wrestling show and I thought, oh, what? It's here? <laughs> Let me go check that out. And I did. And I, and I just really, you know, enjoyed it. And I guess I, I took to it. It's interesting because even back then, did you know that it was a combination of athleticism, but also acting at that time? Yes. And I'm actually, I'll say this, I'm, possibly the only person I know who, when I first heard that it wasn't quote unquote real, I thought that was the greatest thing I ever heard <laughs> because I did love, you know, the theatrics of it. My problem was at, you know, the time when I was a kid, I was afraid of the violence, you know? So to me, it was, I felt a little bit guilty watching it because they were hurting each other. So when I found out they actually the goal wasn't to hurt each other but just to create the illusion that this was happening i thought you know even though people do get hurt of course but you know i thought this is the greatest thing ever people are play fighting on national <laughs> international television this is so awesome so you know for me that took it took it up a notch and that's when i really wanted to you know be a part it, of it yes and it's so curious because a lot that will get into the professional wrestling business they are athletes mm -hmm. and the physicality and things like that. But you came from the acting side of it and right. then learning that, hey, I can do this. This is something mm -hmm. I can pursue. I'm curious, though. Did you have an athletic background? Um, my focus wasn't so much on athletics. Um, I grew up in Germany and there isn't so much of a focus there on sports and athletics, for example, is the soccer here. You know, yeah, but you don't really, I mean, here you have, you know, in high school and college, it's, there's such a, such a big focus on sports, whereas in Germany, you kind of, you do your PE class once a week for a couple of hours, and, you know, one week you play basketball, the next play, week you play volleyball, and then you might run around the track, you know, it's just really to get exercise. So for me, well, growing up, I did dance, first of all, I did jazz dance for several years, uh, which I loved, and then when I was at college, I actually, I got into Muay Thai boxing. That was the thing that I, you know, I was actually, I thought fighting was interesting. So <laughs> I started to get into that. And then later I did some MMA and, and things like that. So I wouldn't say I come necessarily from a sport background, but definitely physically, you know, physical expression, either through dance or, you know, MMA or whatever, I've always found interesting as well. Combat sports. And that's mm -hmm. also, it's very physical. And you were 
involved in the combat sports, but I do want to point out the dance. Yeah. Because so much of what we see in professional wrestling, mm -hmm. choreography, choreographed. Right. Do you think that dancing also lent itself in helping you become a professional wrestler? Absolutely. And I always say uh, when, when new well, girls come to, to the sport and they are dancers, I always say, oh, it's going to be much easier for you then, you know, because there's also, there's a certain, um, there's a certain understanding of your body and how it moves and how to, you know, when you're doing certain high flying moves, how to keep yourself light and, and things like that, the dancers can do a lot better than somebody who, you know, who might not be from that world, you know, and speaking of wow, for example, uh, one of the girls in the documentary, Kita Rush, she's in wow. Um, that's how I met her. But there's another girl there too, her name's Faith, and she plays the lioness. And she's an amazing dancer, and that translates very well into her wrestling as well. There have been so many dancers. I remember Layla back in WWE right. was a very yeah. well seen dancer. She, mm -hmm. she danced for the Miami Heat NBA basketball team, but she did bigger and better even than that. I mean, she was right. really good trained. Naomi has a dancing mm -hmm. background. There are, there are many. And, WWE and other places mentioned yeah. wow and just other wrestling that do have some type of dance background as well right. and right. for you did you want to then become a trained professional dancer no that wasn't really something that I was going to pursue that was something that I just really enjoyed for fun and then when it came time to do the documentary how did you get involved with this uh, I was contacted by uh, Jeremy Norris, who made the documentary. Um, actually, it came through Kita, through Kita Rush. I think she'd recommended me or given him my contact details. So that's how that came about. And they said, we're doing this thing, and we'd love to interview you. And I said, of course, that sounds, sounds wonderful. What have you enjoyed most about your pro wrestling career so far? Oh, my goodness. That's, uh, you know, there's been so many moments um i sometimes talk about because people i've been asked before um whether my whether all the blood sweat and tears that i had to put into you know getting to for example getting to wwe or getting to impact in those places whether it was worth yeah. it and i always say you know it wasn't a sacrifice so for me for example back in the day when i was still training you know i was driving three hours to training you know, and then three hours back again, you know, twice a week, you know, going down there and just learning all the moves, not making any money, you know, broke as hell. And, uh, but that to me was just as enjoyable, you know, as then being in WWE and walking out in front of 10,000 people. You know, it's not like I had to go through the one to get to the other. It was just everything, every part of the journey was exciting, you know. So, of course, I have, you know, standout moments, you know, even back in the uk when i was in fwa you know being part of those shows that were really sort of cutting edge on the british wrestling scene at the moment you know i think about my ladder match with beth phoenix and ovw when i was signed to wwe but not on the road yet and then obviously you know wwe going out there for the first time you know being part of a wrestlemania impact you know having an a year-long storyline as winter the <laughs> strange vampire i mean so many moments you know that winter character was just so phenomenal. I love that persona. I love that character. You mentioned starving as a professional wrestler, <laughs> which so many do. Right. But it, it correlates with being a starving actor or actress as well. Right, right absolutely. <laughs> yes, that's all part of it. <laughs> what things are you doing these days? Um, well, I'm focusing a little more on acting, I guess. I've done a, I did a couple of projects last year, one of which I can talk about which is coming out called sorority of the damned uh which is a horror comedy and it's uh features of some witches and I, I play one of the witches i'm unrecognizable i have to tell you i'm not sure when it'll come out but <laughs> um we did that end of last year so i think that'll be done pretty soon um i'm writing my own projects and you know working on that as well you want so, to write as well you want to do your own film do you want to direct right yes i just shot a concept trailer for a project uh that's called beautiful monsters and so i'm hoping to you know create the feature film out of that it's interesting because you say you're unrecognizable 
How right. much time then went into the makeup when you had to go do these scenes for that movie? Well, I was uh, I was lucky and unlucky at the same time because <laughs> because I actually I was wearing a mask, so it was a silicone mask. So I'd gone into you know makeup a few weeks before, and they took a cast of my entire head and created you know, this crazy earth witch mask for me. Um, so I got to put that on. Um, you know, the unlucky part of it, it was it wasn't super comfortable. <laughs> you know, it was some breathing restrictions, that kind of thing. But, you know, but at least that I didn't have to also sit in makeup for three hours. <laughs> it's all a, it's all a balance. But it's it was, so funny because, well, the balance, it's so funny because the sense that it's like, all right, let's get this scene, and it's uncomfortable. It's like, right. oh, I hope we get it in one take. Please let us get it in one take. Yeah, but you know what? As soon as they call action, it's not uncomfortable anymore. You know, and we shot at night, and it was freezing cold. But the second that and you're just sitting, then you go, <laughs> I'm ready to either get on set or go home. You know, because one or the other is safe. But as soon as, literally, the, as soon as they yell action, it's like you forget because your your adrenaline is pumping at that moment you're the character at that moment you know so you can go and you're focusing on your action and then once they say cut it's like you're cold again <laughs> katarina it also doesn't that equalize itself to pro wrestling and when you get ready for a match compared to when you're getting ready for a scene is that the same type of adrenaline for you yeah it is i mean obviously with wrestling the thing is it's it's live and it's not rehearsed so for me it was always the extra nerves of you know, what if, what if something goes wrong? You know, I'm less nervous now, obviously, after 20 years, because I know that if something goes wrong, I mean, speaking of, you know, making a mistake, I'm not talking about an injury at this moment, but, you know, something, we forget something, I know that we can cover it, you know, so, <laughs> so I'm more confident now in that. So, but I mean, at the beginning, that was really the main nerves were coming from, like, what if I forget something? What if something goes wrong? What, what if I look stupid? <laughs> You know, luckily I've never had an accident happen to where I got injured or had somebody else seriously injured in the ring. So that was uh, that was very fortunate for me. But that was something that I wouldn't, you know, that would I put that out of my mind before I go out there, you know, and just really focus on focus on the task at hand. But yeah, but you're right in terms of the adrenaline because actually also um, I've had it before and I haven't been injured, so you know, but sometimes you get hurt a little, you know, you get a bump, you get a bruise, you know, if had fluid in my knee, that kind of thing. And it's crazy because when you're out there, you don't feel it at all. And you hear stories about people all the time, they're injured, they finish a match, they come back and people are like, you're walking, you shouldn't be walking. Triple H tore his quad and finished mm. a match. I right. mean, yes, those are some of those things are just amazing. But, but right. like you said, with the adrenaline going and all, and you're out there doing it. Yes. Yeah, you don't feel it. It's interesting, too, because I'm learning so much. You, you had this mask that you had to wear. <laughs> Do you still have the mask? No, I wasn't allowed to keep it. Oh. <laughs> I definitely would love to. <laughs> it would have been a great social media buzz. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have pictures of it, so I have been posting some of those. <laughs> and that leads me to pro wrestling. Mm -hmm. Have you kept any, any memorabilia or any things in your pro wrestling that you hold near or dear to you that you have? Yeah, I do. I have a little shrine to myself. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, I was just going to place to keep things. I have actually, there was a, a wrestling company out here called Wrestling Cares a few years ago out here in California. And I have a huge trophy from that where I won a tournament. Um, I have actually, I have a title belt right now from a Maverick Championship Wrestling, you know, which also here in California, which, but that's just because of COVID, I haven't defended it. <laughs> it's not technically mine. <laughs> I'm just a holder. I have my action figure. I have some fan art. You know, people have drawn me. Somebody made a small doll of me. So I have things like that. Yeah, how cool is that? Fans just sending you things and being able to post things when they do that. How, did you even think about fans even doing that when you were getting started in this whole thing? 
No, I mean, it's so touching that somebody not only thinks of you and likes your work, but they also, they take the time to conceive of that kind of an idea and sit down and take the time to make it and put that effort into it. I mean, it's really amazing. I have no art skill whatsoever. In <laughs> Europe, you have, you have an acting skill, you have a combat mm -hmm. sports, a pro wrestling skill. Do you have any art skill? Um, I, I like to think that... <laughs> <laughs> that I that I can doodle a thing or two. Creative want, mind. Yes, I mean I'm not I'm not a proficient painter, you know, shall we say? But I but I make some pretty doodles sometimes. You're not painting by numbers. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I could stay between the lines. <laughs> yeah, <they're, laughs> it's something I don't know if we any of us can do actually. Who knows? <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, what did you like most about? this documentary? Well, I think what I liked most was really the personal stories of the four women and how different each story was. You know, we all came from it, from such big, different backgrounds. You know, you have Delilah Doom who always wanted to be a wrestler, you know, Kita who it was sort of a, a happy accident that it even happened, you know, and yet me coming from Europe, you know, thinking, oh, this is cool but then coming to it a different way, you know? So yeah. And then Shelly Martinez, obviously that I know as well, just everybody's different path is just so interesting. I think that's too what makes it because it's four different stories. Even right. though it's centered around one thing, it is four different stories. Yeah. Now the documentary, it's 81 minutes. And also it's the other side of the ring will be available globally on digital platforms on May 20th. Have you seen the whole thing yet? I haven't seen the whole thing yet. I'm probably about halfway through. I was I, I have to fight a bit of resistance to sit down and watch myself. <laughs> You're one of those. You're one of those. You don't like to see yourself. And see, that lends itself too. Is it hard for you to watch you wrestle after you wrestle? Um, the thing is, I always have the resistance to watch it. Once I see it, you know, either I hate it and I have to switch it off or I'm like, oh, that was actually quite good. And then I might watch it four times. <laughs> you know, so it just, I think it's just the fear of it being awful. <laughs> and once I see it, you know, if I, if I like it, I'm like, okay, great. I'll watch this again. <laughs> Women in professional wrestling. Mm -hmm. We've seen such a growth spurt in that. Yes. And How different... How different do you think it is now compared to when you first started to get into it? Yeah, well, I like to t tell the anecdote. When I first started, the companies that I worked for, which is Hamelot UK and then FWA, I was the only woman. So there were no other, you know, there was a couple of other girls that were training here and there, but mainly like in terms of being on the main roster and wrestling, I was the only one. And that was for the first four or five years of my career. You know, unless I went, you know, to other countries, Germany, for example. Um, and then several years, maybe like two, three years ago, I went back to England for a show and it was an all women's tournament. And it was the entire show was women. And then before the show, they were holding a tryout for a couple of spots on the show. And there was another 15 women <laughs> that came to that. So it was like, you know, just the landscape is entirely different. I mean, I'm not sure what it, I can't really compare it so much to here, you know, how, what it was like here, but definitely even if you look at, for example, OVW, when we were in OVW, there was, you know, less, there was a handful of, of girls there, you know, and now if you look at NXT, it's just a wash, you know, which is great, but I imagine, you know, very difficult at the same time to push your way through that field. Well, Katerina, do you equate it to anything as to why the surge has happened, why it's become now it, Hey, it's about cheering for what they're doing in the ring too. It's not just about, Oh, I like the way they look. So I'm going to cheer right. for them. It's about right. the action though, which is really cool, but yeah. equate it to anything or just say, well, I wonder why this happened now. Yeah. I think it's just, we're evolving as a creature, you know, humankind is evolving as a creature. We are understanding that, you know, gender roles are, shifting you know as as our roles in our society aren't as you know as under static as they used to be you know there's more movement in between you know you could be anything 
as a woman now, you know, from, I think probably back then a lot of women might have walked into the training school, seen only sweaty dudes there and gone, oh, I'm not sure about this, you know, and it took a few people like me who I, you know, I didn't care. I was always comfortable around men as much as I was around women. So for me, it wasn't a problem. You know, I was just happy that they accepted me and worked with me as if I was an the equal. Same. Quote, right um so it was lucky for me that they didn't sort of push me to the side and to be honest with you it was easier for me being the only woman than say if there'd been two of us because then they would always have stuck us together forever whereas this way i got to work with so many different you know very talented wrestlers you know even back then so but i think that's just part of it and then you know as time goes by people see more and more women emerging and it's just, and then they go, oh, I can do this too. And it just becomes, you know, like a, a evolution, I get, well, evolution. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not just wrestling, right? It's any, it's any, it's across all facets of society is that these things are changing. So it's all happening at the same time. Do you find too that in acting and that in, movies, theater, things like that too, that it's also getting better for women. Not that it wasn't bad, and not that it wasn't good for yeah. women, but that's just getting better for women as well. Yeah, I mean, I think um, in terms of acting, there's always been the problem that there's so many more women in it, you know, competing with each other. But I think definitely when it comes to maybe directing and producing those kinds of positions that that's changing as well. And there's more women pushing further in, into that field. Has that also led itself to give you some excitement in pursuing that avenue? Yeah, I mean, even that, I, I shot my first film, uh, my first short film back in, it must have been around 2004. So it was a, you know, it wasn't something that I thought, oh, I can't do this because I'm a woman. You know, I, I never really thought of myself, you know, limited by my gender, shall we say. I never really took that as, you know, something that, that I couldn't do because of that. But, um, but yeah, but I think in terms of other people seeing you as a valid, you know, person in that field or showing you that respect or even believing that maybe you could do it, <laughs> um, probably, you know, so other people's perceptions probably changing will also help get you through it. Well, Katerina, do you find yourself, do you still go to acting classes? Do you go to film and directing classes if they have such a thing? Um, I haven't been in a while to an acting class. I was taking an acting class like before COVID and, and that. And I took some during COVID, but it, to be honest, it's not the same on Zoom. <laughs> so I'm hoping to, you know, get back into that a little bit more. In terms of uh, directing and, and things like that, I, I do, I watch things online you know, just like advisory things, but I, I don't know. I think the best way to learn that is by, by making your own projects and that's what I'm doing. So hopefully that will pay off. Now you mentioned also like different types of characters such as witches mm -hmm. and horror, vampires, things like right. that. Is that something that you were always a fan of too when you were younger or it just morphed into something later or those were the parts available? Hmm. Well, I've always been a fan of vampires, I think, as everybody <laughs> everybody has. Uh, in terms of horror, I'm not really a horror fan, per se. Um, it's not necessarily a genre that I would seek out, particularly, even though this last one that I did, that was more like a horror comedy that was very unique, very original. Um, so something like that I'm more drawn to. And then, as you said, you know, but a lot of those roles are available because there's a lot more, I think, films being made in the horror genre than, than other genres. What do you think, too, about uh, when you look back and, and just if you could tell us anything about vampires in the mm -hmm. sense of, did you have favorite movie? that feed? I remember The Lost Boys. I don't know if that resonates with you or not, but yeah. there were, there are some really good ones. It's not just all blood and guts, for God's sakes, and the biting and all that, but there's some really cool ones. And then you have some people like Elvira, who is this <laughs> more of a comedy thing, I understand. But were there some vampire movies or characters that resonated with you? 
Yeah, so I also love The Lost Boys, of course. But my favorite vampire movie of all time is called Near Dark. And it was actually written or co-written and directed by Catherine Bigelow, who is obviously a very, you know, important female director, just coincidentally, <laughs> you know, but that was an amazing film. And um, I always recommend that as, you know, if you want to watch a really cool vampire movie, you know, that's the one to watch as far as I'm concerned. I also want to touch base about some of the things that I read about, <laughs> good things. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I know, right? Lex Luthor? Yes. <laughs> now there's someone I could resonate with. <laughs> right. All right. So from the Superman series, Lex Luthor was like the top villain in the Superman series. Mm -hmm. And tell us why you became a fan of Lex Luthor. Well, it's not specific to Smallville. Because ah. I, I, didn't really, I didn't really know anything about, I'm not a comic book fan, but to, other than Lobo, I love Lobo. Uh, but other than that, I've not really been, you know, an avid comic book reader. Um, but I was watching Smallville, and I, what I loved about that character is that he's always on the cusp between good and evil. Like, he's not evil yet, right? He wants to be good. So he's, so he's uh, Clark Kent's best friend, and, and he admires the goodness in him, and he wishes he could be more like that, but he, he can't, he's not. But he's always teetering on the brink. And then it's such a slow burn that, you know, every time you go, you know, something happens and you think, oh, he's turned now, this is it, he's gone to the bad side. And then it turns out that he didn't actually do it or, you know, there was some other thing and he's not quite there yet. It just teases heel turn for <laughs> so many seasons. So that's really, I guess, what I, what I loved about that, you know, that character. Because I'm fascinated with duality as I think, you know, most people are. You know, that's also my fascination with Catwoman, for example, in, you know, in Batman Returns, where she's, she's good and bad at the same time. And in professional wrestling, mm -hmm. you can lend that to that as well, because you can go from good to right. evil, back and right. forth like that as well. That, is that something that, as an actress, as a pro wrestler, you like? If yeah, that's absolutely. something you could do. Yes, because you also, you get to express a side of you that you wouldn't normally in real life that you're trying to suppress, right? I mean, we all have a bitchy side, but we don't get to really necessarily, <laughs> you know, depending on how we're raised, we sometimes we hold our tongue, but when you're a heel, you get to say or do anything, you know? And they always do say as well, when you're a heel, the best heels believe that they are right. Right, so you could have a legitimate gripe and you could be a heel, but you could completely believe in yourself. So it's just, it's really fun. The Miz does such a great job at that because he believes in himself so much <laughs> and that people are against him that it just resonates so well as a heel character and then bringing that up. But you're right, it's that passion too, yeah. to believe that inside. And I'm glad you mentioned the bitchy side because that I was gonna ask you the next question was, so are yeah. we seeing the good Katarina or the evil Katarina? But I know we're seeing the good Katarina. <laughs> I keep the evil Katarina well in check most of the time. <laughs> oh. Hey, Katarina, what is going on with WOW, Women of Wrestling? And I got to see you were the temptress with that yeah. company. Such yeah. a fun company to be involved with. It's a super fun co company. I love, I mean, it's, it's a great setup. They have great production values. I love, you know, it sounds a little cheesy at first when you think about, you know, the superheroes and all the different characters, but when you watch it, it's actually, it's so well done. Um, it's just, yeah, and all the, all the women are so talented and they look spectacular when they come to the ring. And I just remember the last time we had a taping and I was, you know, standing backstage watching the monitor and going, this is good, you know, I would watch this. So it's actually, it's excellent, you know. And it's still, even though it's family friendly and, you know, purposefully so, it's still got a bit of an edge to it. So I think, I think a lot of people would um, enjoy it and might enjoy it, I haven't seen it yet. Anyway, it's, as to your question, <laughs> um, I don't know is the short answer. I know they were, I'm pretty sure they were planning something before COVID hit. So then since that happened, they were very, very concerned about safety, you know, even 
because they were talking about you know when it would be safe to bring back training and everything like that and even on that front they were extremely concerned about just doing everything so everybody was safe and comfortable so which you know which is great and um in terms of what they're going to have planned for another taping if that's just been postponed or if they're going to do a new thing i'm not sure so hopefully they do and mm -hmm. you're on board if they're coming back and doing something and they're like hey come on down you're like okay <laughs> i'm there is that am i fair to say that well i hope so and then of course i have the best tag team partner in the world the dagger and uh, together we are the vengeful vixens. So I think uh, <laughs> revenge is, is not completed yet. <laughs> <laughs> well said. <laughs> well, it's so interesting with WOW because David McLean, originator with GLOW, right. and then you have Jeannie Buss, a mm -hmm. woman, owner of the Los Angeles Lakers NBA basketball, very prominent. Right. She's very involved in this as well. And then you, the thing that's nice about this one too is the original GLOW was fun but you have more trained wrestlers in WOW, right. yourself, Diamante, Kira Hogan, many mm -hmm. others, they go down mm -hmm. the list, which is really cool. Yeah. How do you think that helps that company as well? Because you are seeing some good wrestling on the show as well, as yeah. characters. Yes. I mean, in all due respect to the, the women who are not as experienced or came to it from a back acting background, um, everybody, I think, is doing a phenomenal job, you know, and even some of the matches that have to be kept a little simpler, um, but through having, you know, the trainer, Selena Majors, she's training everybody and helping put the matches together. I just think that the way everything's put together, it's all the matches are, you know, exciting and worth watching. But I agree with you that having the more experienced wrestlers there that might bring some of their own moves to it as well, their own flair, their own, you know, original way of, of choreographing, you know, or presenting themselves, all of that adds to it and, you know, gives it some extra layers for sure. And I love talking about this so much, but I'll, I'll just do one more question on it. it. You are the temptress. Right. That to me fits you so well, but Thank you. <laughs> explain to us, is that something you came up with? Is that a combination of them and you putting that together? And what are your thoughts, if you could explain to others who've never seen it, who the temptress is? And thank you for that. Yeah, well, actually, I think it came from my tag team partner, Dagger, Michelle, her, and um, possibly the creative forces that be at WOW as well. Um, but she presented it to me. And I mean, the temptress is really somebody that lures you in. <laughs> with her radiant charm and then stabs you in the back, I guess, when you're not looking. Good and evil, good and evil. Right, exactly. <laughs> Sweet on the outside, rotten to the core <laughs> on the inside. And so I think that's how me and Dagger complement each other well, because she obviously, she comes out there with a the, with the knife playing. She's maybe a little bit more direct about her evilness but i think we match each other very well <laughs> there was a great show that ran for a while mm -hmm. lefem nikita oh yes when i watched and they're showing replays of it now and when oh. i watched it back then and watched some of the shows now mm -hmm. and i see your character development i see a little bit of lefem nikita in you did that resonate with you is that a trick question? Because you know that's why that's why I named myself Nikita back in the day. <laughs> so yes. did not know that. Really, that's insane. Yeah, the original one in the '90s with uh, Peter Wilson and Roy Dupour. That I was obsessed with that show. So that's how. And then when I first started wrestling, well, first I wanted to call myself just Cat, and then that was right when. Miss Kitty became the cat in WWE. Yes. So I was like, okay, I better change my name and I changed it to Nikita based on that show. So, but yeah, but she's definitely somebody that I wanted to emulate in some way. So I just thought she was the coolest. During that time, mm -hmm. that was like very unusual to have a woman playing a, a lead role, but also a lead role who was just badass too. Right, yes. 
definitely. And, you know, gorgeous and badass at the same time. And just really, you know, holding her own against, you know, all the other, all the other guys that were there. All right, we're going to wrap this up. You've been so gracious with your time. I so appreciate it so much. I want to make sure we also, the documentary, The Other Side of the Ring, and it will be available globally on digital platforms on May 20th. It really is a good inside look at not only pro wrestling, but women involved in pro wrestling. I enjoyed it. I got to see it beforehand. It was really well done, really good. Each one telling a story, showing some of the action, showing what you all went through, and just talking about different things. And I wanted to close with a couple of things. Mm -hmm. In acting and in London, the theater is so prominent. Mm -hmm. Is theater acting something you also have pursued or wanted to pursue? I know you're doing film acting, but what about the theater? And did you ever have a favorite play, whether it be on Broadway or in London that you went to see? I love theater acting. So that's probably, it's probably my favorite kind <laughs> even. Um, I love, yeah, there's a bunch of plays that I love. I love uh, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. Um, I love, I actually, I got to play the lead in The Dollhouse uh, by its, uh, back in, in London. So that was an amazing experience. Uh, I've been in a few different plays. I just, I just love the theater. So yeah, that's definitely something that I want to get back to one day as well. It's on my bucket list. <laughs> Be on a stage. <laughs> Did you ever see Guys and Dolls? No. Oh. <laughs> I haven't, but I was in Oliver Twist when I was a kid. Oh, the, God. The uh, musical uh, uh, that's stage. a classic. Oh, my gosh. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, this orphan boy. <laughs> it's so cool because, see, then Guys and Dolls, they, it was a Frank Sinatra and Marlon Brando and can't remember who I wrote, everyone in the cast, but they made the movie. But then right. it also was a huge hit on Broadway, mm -hmm. and, and I believe Nathan Lane did a great job with it. I hope I have my, my actors correct because I always get it confused too with Nathan Lane and Matthew Broderick. Mm -hmm. And the two of them are like just huge on Broadway anyway. And all, and anytime in New York city, pre COVID, I would always try to catch a play, something there yeah. and all just so much. And I'm, and that's what I wanted to let to too. And then I'll let you go. But have you ever gone to Broadway? Have you ever seen anything on Broadway? Cause I know you travel a lot. Yes, I have. Let me think. What did I, I see that. Les Miserables? No. I've seen, I saw that in London. Wow. Yes, oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, that was fantastic. Oh, God, yes. Yeah. Oh, I my God. Hats in Germany and Hamburg, <laughs> of all places. I saw Hamilton out here um, in LA actually a couple of years ago. My mom took me. So, I'm, yes, I've seen a few. What a good mom. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, well, it's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, you so love. much for taking the time. I noticed, I think I noticed, I hope I'm right on this. I saw a tail popping up every once yes. in a while. Yes. Does the cat have a cat? I have, I have four cats. So that was Pixie that you saw. And she was also, I don't know if you heard a loud crash somewhere halfway through. That was, she flew over the, the garbage can, so. I'm gonna have a word with her when I get off of you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe she was mad at some of the questioning. It might be. <laughs> always a critic. Someone's always a critic. Come on. I just wanted to be a part of it. <laughs> be a part of it. Hey, what are the four cats' names then? Pixie and Pixie, Zoe, Rogue, and Harley. Harley Quinn. Yes. And Rogue from X-Men. So <laughs> Very good. Oh, thank you so much. Hey, is there anything social media you want to close with for fans to catch you on social media? Yeah, so my Twitter and Instagram is Katarina's Infamy. And then my website also, katarinasinfamy.com. And that's about it. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It's been fun.